Killing San Antonio starts right now. Security officials find a body trapped in the buoys recently placed in the Rio Grande River across from Eagle Pass. Coming up next, how Texas is responding this morning, plus how the Department of Public Safety claims that Texas state troopers have been separating families. Outside with live cam, taking a look at the downtown skyline, 80 degrees out to San Antonio International Airport. We'll talk to Mike in a moment, otherwise known as the birthday boy. Aww. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's Thursday, August 3rd. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good day yesterday. I, I did, but today it is all about Mike, and that's yes. pretty much standard operating Aww. procedure around here on the morning show. <laughs> it is? It Happy is. Birthday. Anyway, birthday. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. And yes, oh, you're off. Oh, my gosh. My birthday hugs today so uh anything to not talk about the the heat around here right so, so happy birthday mike yeah exactly so how was your birthday let's talk about that uh 102 yesterday two days in a row we are going to be right up around 103 again today close to a record high temperature that would tie the record did y'all see the moon this morning oh my gosh it's like somebody had a giant spotlight out there Absolutely beautiful with the clear skies right now. 81 out there at the airport, 82 Castroville, 81 Canyon Lake. Little bit more humidity than we had at this time yesterday. Not oppressively humid. I mean, it's getting up there around Randolph, New Braunfels, Pleasanton Canyon Lake. Uh, just a, a hint more, but yeah, those beautiful blue skies. Catch the moon before it sets later on this morning. Feels like 87 out there at Canyon Lake, 86 at the airport, as well as in Castroville. Got a low amount of mold out there. Once again, we do have a yellow uh, CPS conservation day. Scan the QR code. Find out more ways to uh, conserve, especially later on in the afternoon. Heat advisories once again for a good chunk of the area and once again red flag warnings from San Antonio up to the north because of those tinder dry conditions and the very low afternoon humidity. 92 high temperature 103 later on today. That's going to tie a rec the record high and uh, yeah, there is just nothing in the short term or even kind of longer term to bring about any changes. We'll take a look way down the road, see if we can see anything coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A local mother continues to fight for justice for her son. Sebastian Garbio was killed in 2020. His body found burned inside a stolen car. The main suspect has already been sentenced for that crime. And now there has been a second arrest in the case. But that case is still open. I have a purpose. Sebastian and I have a purpose. And our purpose is to get all these individuals accountable for their actions. 16-year-old Edgar de la Cruz turned himself in after Sebastian's remains were found. He was charged with murder and later given a 25-year sentence. Felipe Angel Perez was officially indicted in June for tampering with evidence but was found and arrested this week. According to the indictment, Perez is accused of trying to alter, destroy, or conceal a shotgun and cell phone that were evidence in the case. Perez has already bonded out of jail and is now awaiting a court date. Well, now to the southern border and the growing controversy over buoys and razor wire installed to deter migrants. It comes amid reports that families are once again being separated after they arrive in Texas. Here's ABC's Andrea Fuji. This morning, a disturbing discovery along the Rio Grande. Security officials finding a body trapped in the buoys recently placed in the river across from Eagle Pass, Texas. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been using the buoys and razor wire to prevent migrants from attempting river crossings. It's the only way we can cross, he says. The Mexican government condemning the buoys, saying we express our concern about the impact on the human rights and personal safety of migrants. Another concern at the border? Dozens of families now claim Texas state troopers have been separating families while detaining fathers on trespassing charges. The Texas Department of Public Safety say children have never been taken from their mothers, but there have been instances in which DPS has arrested male migrants on state charges who were with their family when the alleged crime occurred. It's a policy shift from 2021 when officials in Texas were told to keep families together. ABC's Ariel Rushev spoke with one family separated for more than two weeks after trying to migrate from Colombia. Like I'd never imagined before, it was a moment I couldn't control, that I worked extremely hard to create a home and that it was going to be destroyed and we would be denied all because of a decision. And more migrants are heading north from Latin America. The number of crossings at the Darien Gap 
a dangerous stretch of jungle from Colombia to Panama, just hit an all-time high. More than 400,000 are expected to cross by year's end. As for the buoys along the border, the Justice Department is suing the state of Texas, claiming the state installed them illegally. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Former President Trump is set to be arraigned today on new federal charges that he conspired to subvert the results of the 2020 presidential election. This is Trump's third grand jury indictment this year and harshest accusation from the federal government yet. U.S. Capitol Police are prepared for Trump's arraignment and are coordinating the plan with the city's Metropolitan Police Department to guard the building and block off some of the surrounding streets. There have been no credible threats of organized efforts to disrupt the proceedings. Although officials expect pro-Trump demonstrations are on the lookout for those that may act violently. The evacuations continue after last week's military takeover in Niger. On Wednesday, the U.S. State Department ordered all non-emergency government personnel and family members to leave. This comes in the wake of the takeover that ousted the country's democratically elected president. An updated travel advisory warns Americans not to travel to Niger, noting that events following the takeover have severely limited flight options. Officials say the departures do not mean the U.S. is shuttering its embassy, shutting down its embassy, or evaluating all of its diplomats. But right now, the U.S. embassy has reduced personnel, suspended routine services, and will only be able to provide emergency assistance to U.S. citizens. Roughly 1,100 U.S. troops in Niger are not expected to leave that country. Governor Greg Abbott has signed two new laws that address street racing. One of those new laws gives police and prosecutors more power to crack down on street takeovers. The law goes into effect September 1st. The other law immediately went into effect. It allows police to immediately remove and impound cars that participate in street takeovers. San Antonio, Austin and Fort Worth, just a few of the cities that have dealt with street takeovers this year. Right now, 437, 80 degrees. School year is almost here. Up next, how you can save a few bucks before you send your student back to class. Checking traffic right now. Looking for any trouble spots before Stephen arrives here in the studio. 90 West at Zarzamora. Traffic looks pretty good right now. Not too bad, not too bad. Looking outside with a live cam. Also, not too bad in the weather department for right now. 80 degrees, but we know things will heat up this afternoon and over the weekend. We'll be right back. Now that we're in August, the end of summer sales are heating up. So where are the big discounts? 12 in your size, Marilyn Warren shows us the savings on back to school tech and back to football tailgates. August is all about hot sales on heading back to class. This month, you can expect back to school sales on tech items like computers, tablets, and printers. Samantha Gordon helps track prices on Consumer Reports' top tested products to determine the best time to buy. And right now, this Apple MacBook Air 13 inch laptop is $750 at Amazon and Best Buy. That's $250 off and the lowest price they've seen on this one. Need to print the homework? You can skip the ink refills and go with a laser printer. This HP LaserJet is discounted to $89 at Amazon and Walmart. This model only prints in black and white, but does a good job on low-cost printing. College students can cook their ramen noodles in this budget-friendly commercial chef microwave. It's about $76 at JCPenney, less than half price. The end of August also signals early Labor Day sales where you can find deals geared toward seasonal items like grills as well as vacuums. You can already score a deal for those tailgates. This portable grill from Coleman, $229 at Walmart. That's $61 saved. But take a look, I just did another quick check and found that same grill at Bass Pro Shops marked down to even less. Finally, be on the lookout for deals on vacuums. This Hoover Stick Vac is $185 at Amazon. That's $95 off. Serious cleaning up. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Yeah, always comparison shop online. You might be surprised by what you find. I, I have been, especially with Amazon. Some, sure. Sometimes, like, I, I would assume that would be cheaper, and it's not all the time. Not all the time, because sometimes the shipping isn't always free, exactly. even for Prime members. 442, 80 degrees. And coming up next, a new era for the Spurs will soon begin at their new headquarters on the far northwest side. We're going to get a first look. And next, the family of a U.S. soldier in North Korea talks about his situation for the first time. 
And welcome back. It's 444. For the first time, we are hearing from the family of a U.S. soldier detained in North Korea. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a family's plea. We love you, Travis. Come home. It's been just over two weeks since U.S. Army Private Second Class Travis King ran across the demilitarized zone into North Korea. King reportedly pictured here the 23-year-old Army Private dressed in black moments before he dashed across the border. North Korea acknowledging this week that Travis crossed and that they are now investigating the matter. And this morning, his mother and uncle are speaking like out that. to GMA. That's not Travis. Travis would not just go over the border like that. He would have wanted to come home. We don't know how he's being treated. We don't know if he's be, if he's eaten. We don't know if he's being tortured. We don't know if he's being interrogated. We don't know anything. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the very latest on Travis King's detainment and get live reaction from Secretary of State Antony Blinken. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 446, the San Antonio Spurs about to move into a new home that is unlike anything else in the NBA. The $500 million rock at La Cantera campus is set to open soon off of Loop 1604 and Interstate 10 near Six Flags. RJ Mark has visited the multi-purpose site to show us why this facility is not just for the team, but also for the fans. The San Antonio Spurs select Victor Wembanyama. A new era for the Spurs begins soon at their new headquarters on the far northwest side. We're excited for the community first and foremost to be able to interact and see what we've been working on for the last few years. Construction at the Rocket La Cantera is entering the final stretch. The campus is more than 500,000 square feet and will include the Spurs new practice facility, medical and retail space, as well as the Spurs club. We couldn't just build a practice facility for our, our team. We needed to make sure that we we're amplifying you know, opportunities to impact and engage with our community. Frost Plaza will be a public space for live entertainment, music, a park, and a splash pad for families. We have our restaurant. We have an outdoor LED screen that we're really excited uh, to bring to the community as far as a secondary site to watch our games. The Spurs are leaving no stone un turned. Even the practice facility has the same dimensions as the current one. It was important for us to keep the intimacy of that basketball court that we have. Uh, we had to make sure that we were protecting that coaching environment and that performance environment for our players. A vision nearly six years in the making is about to become reality just in time for the arrival of Victor Wembanyama. This is a world-class facility. Um, it's literally one of one, um, but we're really excited. Spurs coaches and players will be moving into the Performance Center in about six weeks, so they will be here for the start of training camp and the Plaza will be open to the public by the start of the season. Reporting from the Northwest Side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And let's look out there with Trans Guide. This shot shows Highway 90 at Zarzamora. Things looking good there. However, we have a reported crash at I-35 southbound near Flores Street, but on the upper level. And we will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos, who's in the studio, but in about 15 minutes or so. Let's check in with the birthday boy and your forecast for this Thursday morning. Do you really want to talk about the weather? We want to talk about you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Start at the beginning, please. Um, what was your childhood like, Mike? Anyway, it wasn't this hot, I'll tell you that. So oh, yeah. Right. There. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we had a neat little kid picture, but my Wi-Fi messed up on me. So anyway, we are going to start off with, we will continue to keep uh, count. We we're up to 37 this year. And uh, just to compare to last year, had 53 days at triple digit temperatures. Of course, we got the earlier start on that, but then, you know, the final number last year was 58. So only five more days into the month of August did we hit triple digits last year. But uh, looking at the forecast right now, we've got at least another 10 on top of that and, and perhaps even after that. So we'll talk about uh, a change that may take place or the hope for one. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. Can't see the moon, obviously, in this picture, but boy, it is just like this huge spotlight up there. It is so beautiful. 86 is the heat index right now. Same thing, Castroville, 85 up the road, Canyon Lake. Dew points are actually up a little bit. I know a degree doesn't seem like a lot, but it does make that much of a difference and even up higher in portions of the hill country compared to this time yesterday. So a couple of clouds are going to form up this morning. We'll have plenty of sunshine. Same temperature profile as yesterday. We make it up to the low 90s at noon and then 103 high temperature yesterday. Couldn't quite muster it for two days in a row. 102 the past couple of days. Obviously nothing is showing up in the satellite picture right now. And there you can see, gee, where's the high pressure sitting right on top of us? Rain all around. Everything is moving pretty much straight west to east. Now, 
been shown this map. That's the high sitting on top of us virtually, and that's what's keeping things very hot. And actually, it's going to heat up a little bit still going into the weekend. So 103, even 104, and that will be very consistent with that thing just not moving at all. So this is the case through the weekend into next week. The high does tend to drift to the west a little bit, but still it's just going to be dominating our upper level wind pattern. The hope is that by late in the week, this trough starts to develop up there around the Great Lakes and hopefully that thing gets enough enough oomph to it to really start to kind of dig down here. That would push the high off a little bit more. That would get us into a bit of a northwesterly flow and at least to ease these temperatures somewhat. But again, that's not until probably next weekend at least. So in the meantime, yep, we're just going to continue to rack up the triple digits. We're looking at 103 today, 104s then the rest of the forecast period and low temperatures right around 78 degrees. You can see each and every day it's going to be really close to the uh, respective high temperature, record high temperature going in through next week. 104. Sure you want to talk about the weather? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to know and we want to be on top Nine, of things. Yes. yes. And, and of course, heat advisories and those red flag warnings in effect once again today, too. Well, watch out for it. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 451, 80 degrees. It's the beginning of the end of an era for Taylor Swift. Up next, a look ahead to her final concert on her current tour tonight. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, five, seven, Fireball, eight. Daily four numbers, eight, two, nine, one, Fireball, zero. Cash five, three, 12, 15, 20, 21. Lotto, Texas, 12, 13, 20, 31, 41, 42. And your Powerball number is 23, 24, 33, 51, 64, Powerball 5, Power Play 2. Four fifty four. Taylor Swift wraps up her current tour and John Travolta talks about being a small town sheriff with some big problems. Really, that's what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's the beginning of the end of an era. Taylor Swift's final North American shows of her era's tour begin tonight in Los Angeles. Fans have already been camping out at SoFi Stadium to get merch ahead of the six-night stand, which will probably see some special surprise guests hit the stage. By the time Swift wraps up the international portion of the tour, experts say it'll likely be the first trek ever to earn over a billion dollars. Nothing that can't be handled quick. John Travolta is a small-town sheriff with some big problems in the new film Mobland, written and directed by Nicholas Maggio. It's his first feature film, and he tells me he wrote the crime drama in just four days. I thought about it. I was like, oh, cars, guns, rural south. Okay, robbery. I kind of constructed my head. I got it out. I sent it, and six months later, I was shooting it. Not exactly your typical Hollywood story. The film also stars Stephen Dorff, Ashley Benson, and Kevin Dillon. It's in theaters tomorrow. Cher believes in selling her song catalog. According to Billboard, she's the latest superstar to cash in on her publishing rights. No word how much she got. And happy birthday, Mr. President. The West Wing and Grace and Frankie star Martin Sheen is 83 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 456 and 80 degrees for now. Former President Trump is set to be arraigned today on new federal charges. Up next on GMSA, how Trump is preparing to defend himself. Plus, a local school district is trying to make this year safer for students. What parents are saying about new metal detectors that will be in every Southside ISD school. Ahead on GMSA at 6 today, we want to help you get outside. Some simple things you can do to get the most out of your yard with some ideas you may not be thinking about. And a quick shot out there at Transkai looking at a Highway 281 at Loop 410. Things look pretty good in this shot, but we will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos, who's in the studio, but we're going to wait till after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Emwyn in Washington. As former President Donald Trump is expected to make his first appearance here at a federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., security is tight. All the details coming up. And let's look out there with a live cam here at home. We're at 79 degrees. I mean, I know we were at 80 what, in the last half hour, so this makes me feel a tiny bit better. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, August 3rd. 
Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's kind of like birthday week here on GMSA. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we celebrated yours yesterday. Today we have Mike and Director Don. And that's right, one of our directors. Uh, let's check in with Michigan's favorite son, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Did you know, mathematically, odds are in your favor. If there's a group of 30 people, two will have the same birth date. A group of only 30 people? And wow. it's, it's yeah. one of those weird, it doesn't seem like that, but the odds are in your favor. Okay. Now you can't say my birthday is the third, who else sure. has that, but just two of them out there with Well, two you yeah. and I were off by only 24 hours, so there you go. Aww. In a few years, but anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the date, so anyway, just thought I'd throw that one out there. Again, anything to avoid talking about the heat, uh, 80 right now, and that bottom number, dew points at 73, so enough humidity to where you notice it when you step outside. 103, high temperature today. We've been up in the triple digits, obviously, the past couple of days, just shy of 103, 102 yesterday. The aquifer only dropped down two tenths of a foot, so we'll take that. And mold is on the low side. Of course, we do have our little bit of a heat index to deal with this morning. And then, of course, the humidity does drop down later on in the afternoon. Feels like 84 out there at the airport, 85. Canyon Lake, 86 in Castroville as of right now. Beautiful clear skies right now. The moon, if you can catch it before it sets, is just, I mean, beautiful. Technically, it is uh, just a couple of days past the full stage, which was on a Tuesday. But yeah, it's just gorgeous out there. Mold is on the low side. Still have the heat advisories in effect through 9 o'clock tonight. And once again, this same little wedge, if you will, from San Antonio up to the north has the red flag warning again up until 9 o'clock. Of course, everywhere else, it's still a very high fire danger just because of the very dry conditions. Warm and humid this morning and 103, like I said, sunny today. Through the weekend, 104, we're going to just bump it up a notch. And that's the situation in through next week. No relief from this heat. The only thing just speculation wise would be way in toward next weekend. We'll take a look way down the road coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Anything going on on the roads? Well, nothing going on over here, Mike, but again, happy birthday Thank to you, you and sir. our director, Don. All right, we have a little bit of a treat for you, at least with traffic. Things should be pretty quiet for the most part. If your commute gets rolling through here along 281 at Loop 410, nothing's going to slow you down. It's actually been a pretty quiet morning out on the roadways, but I did talk to our friends at Transguide earlier. An issue popped up along 35 near South Florida Street. We showed you that shot uh, a little bit earlier, and it did look like that crash had already cleared out as I take you to our map. What we're going to see a lot more of, of course, is the active construction, some of which should still be wrapping up. But we know that there is a lot more planned as we get closer to the weekend. Now, the good news is at this time, I'm not seeing any of the construction sites uh, slowing anybody down, but we did have a few slowdowns reported earlier along Loop 1604, and that's always expected. Big expansion project expected to ramp up this weekend. We're going to have more on that a little bit later on. But as I mentioned, we are taking a look at some of these travel times and nothing is slowing folks down. I-10 eastbound heading in from Bernie. The journey should take you about 24 minutes here to the Alamo City, 25 minutes along 281 southbound if you're heading in from Mulverde this early. And right now, not too awful from New Braunfels. About a 27-minute commute if you travel along 35 southbound. Back here, again, great shot at 281 at Loop 410. We are hoping that it stays pretty quiet this morning. There's still lots to talk about and lots to prepare for this weekend. I'll have more updates on closures coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, sir. San Antonio water system crews worked overnight to restore water service to several businesses along Interstate 10 in the Leon Springs area. Saw says a non-SAWS contractor cut into a 12-inch water main last night with the intent of adding a new service line but was unable to complete the connection. Several businesses in the area were affected, including a Bill Miller Barbecue, Walgreens, Schlotzky's, along with some doctor's offices and a hair salon. Several SAWS crews worked through the night to try to get things ready so those businesses can reopen later this morning. Well, this morning we are learning more about the life of Devin Riley. She was the New Braunfels pilot who died in a plane crash at an air show in Wisconsin over the weekend. Our Avery Everett spoke to her family who called Devin a go-getter and a role model. Devin was so about like hard work and, you know, putting your head down and doing what it takes. A dedicated pilot, even more devoted to her family. Nobody had a bad thing to say about Devin, like ever. Devin Riley's family remembers her as a loyal and loving spirit. She had such a humble way about her where it was just, she just pursued her passions to the full, like the fullest extent. Um, and it was inspiring and always has been. Riley died Saturday morning when her plane crashed into a Wisconsin lake. 
The National Transportation Safety Board and the Federal Aviation Administration are currently investigating. Riley's sister, Kaylin Colley, says she died doing something she loved. It was her passion. She wanted to share with other people. At only 30, Colley says her sister was a fierce advocate for women in aviation. She's always been a real big go-getter um, ever since we were growing up. Inspiring not only the pilots she taught, but her entire family as well. You just, you just watch her on his men, it's all you can do. Now, days after Riley's death, her sister says their family is finding ways to honor her memory. And we get to like celebrate in, the, in, the, in a painful way um, her life. Remembering Devin Riley as a pilot, but a person first. She was always pursuing something and just was like the vigor and like it was just always so inspiring. Her family has two memorials set up for this weekend and next. For details on those, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Southside ISD wants to prepare families since students return to school in two weeks. They handed out backpacks, supplies, even food during last night's back to school bash at Southside High School. The school district says that parents are going to play a vital role in making sure students succeed academically. They report that increasing enrollments up 200 additional students from last year. The district expects that number to keep growing. Administrators also showed families the new metal detectors that will be in every Southside ISD school. Sent out surveys to our community. 80% of our community was in favor of the metal detectors. At least they're taking a step to try to secure the safety of the kids for the kids. So, yeah, it's very impressive. I like it. The district is also encouraging parents to stay up to date with their kids' schools so their child has a smooth start to the school year. 506, former President Donald Trump is set to make his first appearance today in a Washington federal courtroom on charges of plotting to overturn his 2020 election defeat. Security is being ramped up around the area for today's hearing. Last night, the former president slamming the case as a scandal. ABC's M. Wen is at the courthouse this morning. This morning, around the federal courthouse in Washington, metal barricades going up all in preparation for Donald Trump's first court appearance here. The former president facing new criminal charges that he tried to overturn the 2020 election results, even though he knew he lost. Since the attack on our Capitol, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. Outside the court today, expected road closures and heightened law enforcement presence. The Secret Service working with Metropolitan Police, U.S. Marshals Service, Capitol Police and other agencies telling ABC News they're confident they can ensure the highest level of safety and security for the former president. He's going to be processed. He's going to be advised of the charges against him. He's going to enter a plea of not guilty. Trump facing four new felony charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States and conspiracy against rights. The indictment handed down Tuesday accuses Trump of pressuring his former vice president, Mike Pence, to reject legitimate electoral votes on January 6. Trump's attorney on CNN arguing his client's request wasn't criminal. And the final ask that Mr. Trump made to Vice President Pence was simply pause the voting. Pence firing back. It wasn't just that they asked for a pause. Uh, the president uh, specifically asked me and his gaggle of, uh, of crackpot lawyers asked me to literally reject votes. Obama appointed Judge Tanya Chudkin will preside over this case. She has handed down some of the toughest sentences so far to January 6 riders. The former president again slamming this case as election interference. Trump had the option to attend today's arraignment virtually, but will appear in person and be digitally fingerprinted. A mugshot is not expected to be taken. M. Wynn, ABC News, outside the courthouse. San Antonio City Council members are set to vote later today on a much debated project at Brackenridge Park. Council will vote on a work contract for the first phase to restore Lambert Beach and the pump house on the park's northern edge. The project was originally approved as part of a 2017 bond. But before work begins, the Texas Historical Commission and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers needs to sign off on that. We break down those plans for you on our website at kset.com. Also happening today, the San Antonio Spurs will host a press conference to announce a new major partnership. Earlier this week, we reported their expected announced that Frost Bank will have naming rights for the current Spurs arena and replace AT&T 
We'll be streaming this press conference later this morning at 11 at all our major platforms like KSAT Plus, KSAT.com, and KSAT's YouTube channel. So be sure to tune in to that big announcement. The time right now is 5.09 and 79 degrees for now. Just ahead on GMSA, how Amazon is making a service available to non-prime customers. A woman sues the manufacturers of popular weight loss drug Ozempic and Monhiro. On Next, we're going to tell you why and what this could mean for the future of the medications. And outside with live cam, down to 79 degrees at San Antonio International Airport on this Thursday morning. Grab a fresh cup of coffee. We'll be right back. 513, we turn now to a new legal battle over some popular drugs increasingly being used for weight loss. It comes as some patients report so-called stomach paralysis. ABC's Andrew Dembert has more. This morning, the manufacturers of Ozempic and Monjaro, the diabetes drug popular for aiding in weight loss, are facing a lawsuit regarding alleged side effects. Oh, 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 Demand for Ozempic and Monjaro exploded as people documented their success stories using the drugs, which are approved to treat type 2 diabetes, but can also be prescribed off-label for weight loss. In the new lawsuit, a woman says she lost 150 pounds, but claims the manufacturers failed to adequately warn about the risk of gastroparesis, a condition in which the movement of food out of the stomach slows or stops. She has not yet been officially diagnosed with the condition. Her problems have been so severe that she's been to the emergency room multiple times, including last weekend. ABC News medical contributor Dr. Darian Sutton says so-called stomach paralysis has been seen in isolated cases, but has not been seen in large studies. It is absolutely brutal. Patients often come in with severe dehydration and electrolyte abnormalities, and many have so, so their symptoms are so difficult to control that they have to be admitted to the hospital. The drugs come with clear warnings about side effects like nausea and vomiting, and a warning about a delay in gastric emptying is on the label. And the drug makers say the medication has been extensively studied. Novo Nordisk, maker of Ozempic, saying gastrointestinal events are well-known side effects, adding the majority are mild to moderate and typically only occur for a short duration. Eli Lilly, maker of Manjaro, tells ABC News, we actively engage in monitoring and reporting safety information for all our medicines. Meanwhile, many employers are now cutting off insurance coverage for similar weight loss drugs, which can cost more than $1,300 a month, straining employer-funded health plans. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 515, 79 degrees. Up next, why one country is not considering limiting kids' smartphone time two hours per day. The Chase Inc. Business Premier Card is made for people like Sam who make everyday products designed smarter. Like a smart coffee grinder that orders fresh beans for you. Oh, genius. For more breakthroughs like that, I need a breakthrough card. Like ours, with 2.5% cash back on purchases of $5,000 or more. Plus unlimited 2% cash back on all other purchases. And with greater spending potential, Sam can keep making smart ideas. A brilliant reality. The Inc. Business Premier Card from Chase for Business. Make more of what's yours. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, and systemic diarrhea. Pepto-Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. Do your armpits need extra care? Try Dove Dry Spray with one quarter moisturizers. It helps your skin barrier recover after shaving for softer, smoother armpits. Try Dove for effective protection that's kind on skin. 518 on your Thursday morning. Yeah, welcome back. We're discussing <laughs> birthday plans. Birthday plans. Yeah. Well, you were just asking yeah. my favorite restaurant to go to wherever you want to take me. And oh, uh, yeah. So. Mark's yeah. house for brisket? Ooh. That would be great. Ooh, that really? sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need about 24 hours off, though, and I can uh, do that during okay. the week with uh, appropriate arrangements made. All right, we can make that happen, right? The bosses are hearing, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. I hope so. They're hey. out of town. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Hey, guys, uh, let's get a quick look around town. Uh, you know, really good news here. I'm not spotting any problems at this hour. It's been a pretty decent morning out on the roadways, uh, but just make sure to watch out. There's still maybe some construction sites uh, where we have crews wrapping up projects. You're not catching any of that here on the Transguide cameras, but you see a lot of it scattered in and around the Alamo City. And of course, the big one this weekend, I've been talking about it all week long, will be here along Loop 1604. It's the North Expansion Project. 
Yeah, we have another full weekend closure planned and we're going to have a lot covered on this tomorrow. More on that a little bit later, but this will begin again tomorrow night and wrap on Monday, August 8th. This is an overnight job, so it's going to be pretty much the same thing what we saw last week, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, but probably about an hour before then, crews will be out there setting up those barrels, so just be on the lookout for them. Westbound main lanes is where we'll see that full closure, and it will be from the Blanco Road exit ramp to the Bitters Road entrance ramp. And I know that's a lot of information to plan for, so scan this QR code takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. All that information is on our website and yeah, this is a big closure that's happening. I talked to TechSite yesterday about this. Did you know 150,000 drivers commute along Loop 1604 every day? Mike, that is a lot of people. And but the goal is obviously to improve the commute and reduce the congestion. And we're going to have more on that a little bit later. But yeah, big deal over there. Well, when you look at the traffic backed up even on a Saturday afternoon on 1604 yeah. right there at 10, and you could <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah that n n not really out of the, the realm of thinking there. Neat picture, got the sun and the moon. There's the moon rising, there's the sun setting. Don't take pictures when you're driving, but thank you very much for uh, that one. And don't forget, to, it looks like your registration expires this month, so get that changed. Anyway, thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAT Connect picture. All right, got a lot of clear skies right now, and I've been saying all morning long how that moon, which is technically two days past full, looks like a huge spotlight up there in the sky. It is absolutely gorgeous. All right, here's the uh, potential rainfall for the next seven days. I know this is just kind of uh, almost insulting to look at. I guess that's the best way to put it, that everybody's seeing some rain, it seems like, except for us. And that is not going to be changing anytime sooner or later. 84 is what it feels like right now. 85 Canyon Lake, Casterville at 84 and some 70s out there in portions of the hill country. Of course, we will uh, drop down maybe a degree or two this morning. A couple of clouds going to be forming up here or there and then warm up quickly through the 80s. 92 at noon and then high temperature today. 103 that will tie the record today and we're again going to be looking at tying or setting individual daily records for the next week out there in the tropics. Remember yesterday we were talking about this little batch of clouds which had looked like it might have developed into something and those chances kept going down and down and now there is nothing out there anywhere in the Atlantic Basin that the Hurricane Center has an eye on. Obviously there's a couple of waves coming in here off the, uh, the coast of Africa along, along the intertropical convergence zone but nothing formation wise at all and keep showing this picture and it doesn't change unfortunately that high just stays in place throughout the uh, foreseeable future. Again, the, the hope being that as we go on into time into next weekend, that this thing is going to start to move off to the west just enough, and that would allow a trough to come in here from Canada to develop over the Great Lakes, which if you get that kind of situation, because obviously we've had this things just parked on top of us, but if you can get more of a uh, kind of a, a roller coaster shape to the upper level steering winds with that trough developing up there around the Great Lakes, that would help us out and that would kind of bring about some changes here and there. But like I said, nothing for at least the next week. We are going to be saying in the low hundreds. Now, yes, the humidity is dropping down in the afternoon, maybe not quite as much as it has been. So, you know, add a degree perhaps to these temperatures. And that's the heat index 104 is then through the weekend in through next week. Like I said, each and every day, individual records are going to be close to being tied, perhaps set and not a drop of rain. If I left now to start a brisket, I could be I could probably have it ready by tomorrow, but I'd literally have to leave right now. Is everybody okay with that? Don't let the door hit you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. we, we I, know, I know the way you meant it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 523, <laughs> 79 degrees. No, I meant it. Just don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Up next, how a major burger chain is now turning to AI to help with the drive through orders. I love it. In today's Tech Bites, China could soon impose new limits on screen time for children. A new proposal calls for restricting smartphone use to two hours per day for older teens and even less time for younger kids. And there would be no usage at all between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Amazon says that non-prime members in a dozen major U.S. cities can now order groceries from its fresh stores, but they'll pay about $4 more than what members typically pay. Amazon hopes to roll out the service across the country by the end of this year. And white 
Castle is adding AI to its menu. The home of the sliders is looking to add AI-enabled voices to more than 100 drive through locations by next year. White Castle says orders will be processed in just over a minute or so. For computers to learn your order, I'm told it takes a couple of bytes. Those are your tech bytes. I thought it was cute. Thanks. 527, 79 degrees. No one in Washington seems very happy about the recent downgrade of the U.S. credit rating. Up next, why the ratings agency is defending its decision and how this affects your mortgage. Do you want to get paid to play a version of the classic card game Uno? We'll show you the requirements of this unique job opportunity. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the San Antonio mother continues to fight for justice for her son. Why the murder case could be taking a new turn after a second arrest. One day after the U.S. receives a lower credit rating, Fitch rating says it had trillions of reasons to support the decision. The debt to GDP at 113 percent and, and growing. Up next, why this is having a particular effect on home mortgages. And let's look out there with live cam. Okay, don't be fooled just because the sun's not out. It's still not cool by any means out there. We're at 79 degrees on this Thursday morning. And good morning to you. It's 5.30 on your Thursday, August 3rd. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Welcome to birthday week. <laughs> birthday <laughs> yes. week Happy continues. Birthday. Happy birthday, oh, Mike. Mike. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. And our director, yes. one of our directors, yes. Don. Yes. Happy Don. Happy birthday, birthday, Don. We have the same birthday. Oh, there's that's, your cake. That's so sweet. Thank you <laughs> very much. You know, we were talking yes. about how if you have 30 people in a room, yeah. Yeah. two odds are about 70%. I was looking it up. If 23 people, 50 50 odds that they would have the same birth date, if you have 75 people, there's 99.9% .9 odds. You will share the birthday with someone else. Don't, yes, don't ask me to do the math on it because I was trying to read about it over there. But, um, <laughs> so but it's just, happened here, at, you know, even here at yeah. KSET quite a bit. Because we got a lot of folks that share the same birthday. Yeah. So anyway, that's your little uh, math tidbit that you can impress your friends with later on today. We've got a lot of uh, clear skies, maybe one or two clouds hanging around here. The moon was absolutely gorgeous when I walked out the back door this morning. A very, very couple of days past full, but a lot of clear skies out there. Temperature stands at 80 degrees, dew point 73. We're four above normal right now. We may fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there, and that number is up just a little bit compared to yesterday, meaning just a hint more humidity when you walk outside. It feels like 85 at Canyon Lake, 84 Castroville, the airport, and right now uh, Randolph is at 76, and as well as Bandera, mid 70s in parts of the hill country. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the update account comes out in about a couple of hours. We still have the heat advisories in effect, even though the humidity drops down. We still have these temperatures that are right around 102, 3, 4, close to 105 in the area. And then on top of that, we've got the red flag warnings again for this little chunk right here from San Antonio up 35 and kind of uh, bordered by 10 heading up into the hill country. And of course, the low humidity in the afternoon and a little bit of a breeze in the dry vegetation. Temperatures this morning, we, like I said, may drop down a degree or two here and there. One or two clouds, then plenty of sunshine, 92 at noon. And add 11, 12 degrees to that. We make it up to 103 later on. That's going to tie the record. As far as anything, any changes, in the near future, nothing. We're gonna have to look way down the road to see if we can uh, get something other than triple digits for high temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any big problems on the road, sir? Not just yet, Mike. It's been a very quiet morning, and that's always the case around this time. If something pops up, you know I'll let you know about it, but let's get a quick look at your quiet commute for this Thursday morning as we inch closer to the weekend. There's 281 at Hildebrand. Just remember to slow down before that curb, whether you're driving in the north or southbound lanes. As you can see, at 90 at General McMullen. We're seeing traffic pick up in the east and westbound links there. And plans to head to the airport, 281 at 410. Shouldn't be a problem spot, but just watch out because as we get closer to morning rush, we'll tend to see a little bit more of the congestion creep in in our map. As I take you to it, you see right now there's plenty of green on the screen, and that's great news, especially if you're traveling into San Antonio. No delays just yet. If you're heading in from Pleasanton along 37 northbound, it should still be that pleasant drive for you. 29 minutes at this hour. US 90 heading eastbound should be about
about a 30 minute commute as you can see. And right now that arrival from Lytle along 35 northbound, it should be about 18 minutes. And if you remember, there was plenty of road work taking place this week along 35 northbound. And I did talk to TxDOT about that. That's all in the clear it was an emergency repair. So it does look like crews have wrapped up that task there and drivers should be in the clear. And that's what we're seeing back here on trans guys. Some clear roads and nice shots from a lot of these as we have the cameras on rotation. But we'll watch uh, the roads closely and have more updates on big closures happening this weekend coming up a little bit later on. Mark. And sauce crews worked overnight to restore water service to several businesses after a water main break on the city's northwest side last night. This happened on I-10 West at Cale Rialto in front of the Park Rialto Apartments. Sarah Costa is live out there with an update. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. Um, yeah, as you can see, the SAWS crews are no longer here. They worked overnight. You can see right behind me to, with the intent of restoring that water early this morning. Let's take a look at what that video looked like earlier overnight as those SAWS crews were here. Multiple SAWS crews worked overnight to restore so water service at Calle Rialto, where nine local businesses lost service due to work gone wrong by a local contractor. The non saws contractor cut into a 12 inch water main Tuesday night with the intent of adding a new service line, but was unable to complete the connection. Some of those businesses that were impacted include a Bill Miller's barbecue, Walgreens, Slotchkey's, Leon Springs Pediatrics, a salon, and other places were without service all day Wednesday. So when we got here, it was a little before five o'clock. Those saws crews had already cleared out. Again, saws says that the water should be restored later this morning to those businesses. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. This morning, the Fitch Ratings decision to drop the U.S. credit rating is starting to have a ripple effect. Mortgage giants Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae also just saw their ratings fall slightly. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, this wave could make it harder for U.S. consumers to find a house and possibly pay the bills. Fitch Ratings says it had trillions of reasons to downgrade the U.S.'s credit rating. Many of those reasons are green and feature pictures of monuments and former presidents. The debt to GDP at 113 percent and, and growing is clearly um, uh, pretty alarming. Um, Furthermore, the, the fiscal deficits are, are large and again growing. Another factor that led to the U.S. credit falling from AAA to AA plus partisan bickering in Washington, D.C. The Democrats have moved left, the Republicans have certainly moved right, and the center has fallen apart. And that just makes uh, making difficult decisions very, uh, very difficult. And almost immediately after the downgrade was announced. On cue, uh, Republicans and Democrats are now blaming each other for the downgrade, essentially. On Wednesday, one day after Fitch's call, credit ratings for Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae likewise slid to AA+, with the yield on 10-year and 30-year treasuries climbing as high as it had been since November. And although mortgage rates rose after the credit downgrade, many economists and analysts are questioning the decision. Fitch's decision is puzzling in light of the economic strength we see in the United States. I strongly disagree with Fitch's decision, and I believe it is entirely unwarranted. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is set to appear in a Houston courtroom to discuss his nearly decade-long delay trial on securities fraud charges. The court hearing comes as Paxton awaits the start of a separate impeachment trial. It's not clear if any decision will be made during the court hearing on when Paxton might finally go to trial on felony charges of defrauding investors in a tech startup. He was indicted in 2015. One of Paxton's lawyers declined to comment on what might be discussed at what's expected to be a relatively short hearing but says Paxton will be appearing. A new twist in the ongoing battle between Florida's state government and Walt Disney World. The Central Florida Tourism Oversight District announced it's abolishing all diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives put together by the former Reedy Creek Improvement District. The Tourism Oversight District serves as a municipal government and taxing district for the property occupied by Disney World. The governing board said it would dissolve the DEI committee and shut down any related programs, saying they waste taxpayer dollars, are illegal, racist, and, quote, un-American. Disney is suing the board and Governor Ron DeSantis, accusing them of retaliating against the company for exercising its First Amendment rights. Time now is 539 and 79 degrees for now.
Well, up next, it's almost time to start making school lunches again. How Lunchables are changing to be more healthy. And looking out there with a live cam, starting your day at 79 degrees, uh, a little more tolerable without that sun, but we're going to be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect throughout the rest of the day and your weekend. We'll be right back. 542, new morning consumer headlines just in time for back to school lunches. Kraft Heinz says it's testing out Lunchables that contain fresh fruits. It says they'll be in the produce aisle of certain stores in the South Central region as kids return to school. The options include clementine oranges, apples, pineapples, and grapes paired with either ham or turkey. The trays also contain cheese and crackers. The new products cost more than the original Lunchables and they're larger. Kraft Heinz says that's because the trays need a separate compartment to keep the fruit fresh. Mattel is looking for a chief Uno player and it's dealing out big money for the role. It says the chosen candidate will earn more than $4,000 a week for four weeks in New York City. The job entails challenging strangers to play the new Uno Quattro family game. It also requires a player to make social media content involving Uno products. Mattel is accepting applications right now and the job is set to start next month. You need 4K a week just to stay in New York City these days. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what, what an experience though, right? 543, 79 degrees. San Antonio Humane Society is next with this precious little pet that needs to be adopted. And Kim is here from the San Antonio Humane Society. And who is this little girl? Just kind little of on the girl. shy side. I know, just a little shy. Hi, this is okay, Nicole. Um, she is a, a little bit of a chihuahua mix, as you can see, just a little. Yeah, she's really a little shy today. So um, kind of wants to just cuddle up with you, but a little bit of a, like I said, a little bit of a chihuahua mix, uh, a couple months old. So this is about as big as she's going to get. She's okay. not going to get much bigger. Um, so she's still just a baby sweet. though, right? Yes, yeah, still okay. just a Canada baby. It's okay, sweetums. <laughs> yes. Oh, see, I baby. know. Just yeah. talk like that to me and I'll be okay. okay. What if I just, her <laughs> eyes are just big as saucers like I that. So, so what you got going on? So we are partnering with Peter Piper Pizza um, mm -hmm. on Thursday at any Peter Piper location. We do pause for pizza. So where they give back a percentage of all sales. So you can go during lunch. You can go during the evening. You're looking for something still to do with the kiddos. Um, oh. Any San Antonio location. And so just mention San Antonio Humane Society or pause for pizza and a percentage of their sales come back to us. So it's perfect. You don't have to cook dinner. What? <laughs> I was going to say perfect, perfect situation. So, yeah, you don't have to fire up the stove in no. your house or no. the oven. You Kids always love pizza. Exactly. Pizza you don't have to clean up. And they <laughs> benefit. Exactly. So, win, 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 win around. situation. And hopefully this little baby gets adopted. Oh, there. yes. Well, if you'd like more information on little baby Nicole. Oh, those lips are so Oh, yes. Oh, she's so <laughs> cute. Head on over 48 to 4 so Fredericksburg cute. Road or sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. If you're getting ready for a backyard barbecue or pool party, you may want to think about deep cleaning your outdoor space. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we are sharing some easy ways to do some outdoor cleaning. If you're looking for a great weekend project, consider taking on some outdoor cleaning. One of the first places I'd like to start is by looking at my landscaping. I do things like pick up debris, make sure that I'm trimming my bushes, and then I take a good look at my planters and replant if anything is needed. After you clean up your yard, you can walk around your fence and inspect it for damage. If your fence is made out of metal, this is a great time to take care of rusty spots. If you're going to take on some outdoor cleaning, it might be a good time to bring in a power washer. A power washer can help you in spaces like your deck, patio, porch, sidewalk, driveway, or even your siding. A power washer will really help get off the years of dirt and grime and have a big impact. Don't forget to clean your outdoor furniture. Throw any washable materials into your washing machine and remove rust on your metal furniture. Now, don't get creative and use your power washer on your windows. You will likely shatter them. Oh, yeah, that'd be terrible. Time now, 549. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. That happened to me. I wasn't using the, the uh, washer, but uh, it, it happened. 
it happened. You could hit a rock and boom, there it goes. All right. Well, thankfully, uh, things are looking great over here at I-10. If you travel through this area, you're going to see a little bit more traffic out there near UTSA Boulevard. Not much of a buildup, but there's more work expected to take place a little further up I-10. More on that in just a moment. But as I take you to our map, for the most part, our commute has started off pretty quiet and nice here in the Alamo City. But yeah, you see a lot of the construction always uh, that's taking place around this time. More of that work is going to take place here along I-10 in Kendall County. I talked about the sod placement earlier in the week. Well, part of that work is going to wrap up on Friday. That takes us to August 4th. That work starts at 9 in the morning, but crews get out there a little bit earlier. It should wrap wrap hopefully around three in the afternoon. It's during that time, we're going to see single lane closures on the frontage road in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. But a lot of work is taking place this weekend in and around the Alamo City. Obviously, the big one that we've been talking about has been the 1604 North Expansion Project. We're going to actually have more on that throughout uh, our Friday newscast. But yeah, it's just one of those uh, areas where you tend to see such a buildup out there, even when it's, uh, what do we say, not even morning rush or afternoon rush. I got stuck in a little bit of that yesterday, traveling up to Stone Oak. Crews are out there 24-7 pretty much, so it's a... Uh Round the clock job, and they are making progress. It's yeah. just a, it's a long haul for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is amazing. We were talking about this the mm -hmm. other day when you haven't been up there in a while, and yeah. then all of a sudden you're <laughs> like, boom! Wow. Where did that <laughs> come? Yeah, what happened here? Yeah. Yes. All right, uh, it is hot, and good way to cool off is just stick your head in the water. Aww. <laughs> I can't tell what kind of bird. I don't think that's a duck. I'm not sure. Yeah, just a little bird trying could to be cool a, off. Could be a dove. <laughs> Dumb. No, no, I don't know. Could Just guessing. Be. It's a cool bird now. That that bird is like you're judging me uh, by the wrong end. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it got cooled off though. So. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, well, this camera's a little out of focus. It is not your eyes, but we've got a lot of clear skies out there. We'll see a couple of clouds hanging around this morning. All right, we've been keeping track of the number of triple digit days in a year. We have now moved into fifth place. And of course, 2009 was 59. Last year we had 58. And then back in uh, 2011, 57 days. Now, this next graphic, when you look at the number of triple digit days up to this date, we are in second place tied with 2009. And notice how even like 2011 is, was only 25 at this point. So last year we didn't have a lot of triple digits in the month of August. We only had five more days, but there were a couple of years where the entire month of August, almost like July, had triple digits all the way through. So that is possible. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I mean, it will be going on for the next 10 days at least. And then there have been a few years where we even had some triple digits going into September. So hopefully history in that case does not repeat itself. 84 is what it feels like right now. 85 up there at Canyon Lake and uh, 79 right now in divine when you factor in the humidity. Triple digit temperatures, like I said, for the next at least 10 days or more through next week. This only goes obviously seven days out, but uh, we're going to continue with these triple digits all the way through next week. Individual daily records are going to be in jeopardy, as we have been saying, perhaps by late next week, next weekend. There's going to be sort of an overall pattern change, something brewing up there in the Great Lakes, okay. southern Canada, which would then kind of indirectly help us out. But that's the only thing as of right now that, that's in the offing. We will patiently wait for next week then. Yes. Thank you, Mike. And patience is wearing thin with these temperatures. <laughs> yes. Fair. 553, 79 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3057, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 8291, Fireball 0. Cash 5 numbers 3, 12, 15, 20, 21, Lotto Texas 12, 13, 20, 31, 41, 42, Powerball. Nobody won last night, so the next drawing is now up to $124 million. Those numbers, 23, 24, 33, 51, 64, Powerball 5, Power Play 2. And don't forget, Mega for tomorrow night is still one and a quarter billion dollars. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the story I know you've been covering. Former President Donald Trump will be arraigned in a few hours on new felony charges that he knowingly lied about the validity of the 2020 election to stay in power. We're going to have full team coverage on that and what he'll face today. Also, high heat and then high gas prices. The link between the soaring temperatures and the rising costs is relief on the way. We'll have those stories and so much more on GMA. 
Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, a San Antonio mother continues to fight for justice for her son. Why the murder case could be taking a new turn after a second arrest. Plus, the life and legacy of a New Braunfels pilot is being remembered after a tragic crash at an air show last weekend up in Wisconsin. And we're a few weeks away from the opening of the Spurs' brand new training facility, a preview of The Rock at La Cantera coming up. Checking Transky, looking good at 10 and UTSA Boulevard with our friends over at Transky helping us keep an eye on your Thursday morning commute. We'll be back.